We are making hot cross buns, so it's like... Oh. Hi ninjas and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making hot cross buns. This is a recipe I have been making for I cannot even remember how many years. I think I have made like five to six hundred worth of buns from this recipe and because of the Lenten season and because Easter is coming up it only seems fitting for me to start my new series my Easter series with hot cross buns I have to tell you once you make these at home you're not gonna want to buy the outside ones because these are sensational it is absolutely delicious the ingredients are fairly simple to put the dough together and you can choose the kind of dry fruits you want i like using a mixture of golden raisins and dried raisins and fruit peels you can use whatever you like some sometimes i even just leave it out and just stick to the spices because you don't want fruits in your mouth all the time when you're eating your buns no pun intended there but the whole point of trying to get at is that this is a start of my Easter series and we are going to be making one of my favorite recipes of all time so without further ado I think it's just time for us to I think it's time for us to just get started so to start off the recipe I want to bloom my yeast I'm using instant yeast if you are using active dry yeast that's also fine this is a little bit of warm milk okay and I'm just gonna add my yeast into this I need 14 grams of yeast one sachet is usually 11 grams so I'm just gonna go I'm gonna eyeball this a little bit into this I also want to add my sugar so I'm using castor sugar any sugar works in this recipe there's no problem you could even go with honey and you want to stir this around ideally with a wooden spoon because you don't want to add any metal into the yeast at this stage you want it to just let it bloom and the heat from the milk will actually let it get all frothy and nice in like 10 minutes the milk has to be warm if it's too hot it's going to kill the yeast if it's too cold the yeast will not bloom it needs to be at an ambient temperature in order for it to kind of rise so when you put your finger into the milk it should not feel too hot on your skin it should feel warm and that's when you know you can add your yeast into your milk we're now going to get started with the flour so in my bowl here i'm going to add butter and i want to rub this together until it's got like fine breadcrumb sandy texture now that my flour and butter looks like this i'm gonna add in my salt and i want to add in all my spices so i've got all spice i've got cardamom and cinnamon i've got my dried fruit which i just soaked in a little bit of warm water and you can see that it's gotten plump it's not completely dry because i want them to well get juicy as they bake and not dry out so i'm gonna add them in now with that little water that might be their residue and just distribute it evenly so you can see it's gotten really frothy and bubbly and airy because the yeast has now reacted we're going to pour that entire mixture into it don't leave anything out get all of that in there i'm going to add an egg and this is going to add richness into the dough but if you want to keep it eggless you could just use 30 ml of more milk to add that moisture and now you just want to just stir this around it's going to feel sticky but it's like so much of fun like play-doh sticky play-doh So once all your liquid has been combined into your dry, you'll see that it's a really sticky dough and that's exactly what makes it fluffy. So at this stage, you want to just scrape the dough out as much as you possibly can, clean up your hands and you want to add a little bit of oil to bring this dough together without it being such a mess. okay so you'll see that it's easier to handle now because the oil has kind of brought the dough together it's not going to be entirely smooth it is going to be sticky and that's absolutely fine because this is what makes it really nice and light you want to oil your bowl really well because you're going to let this sit for an hour and a half and this hour and a half is really really important because if you don't do this step you are going to lose a lot of the fluffiness in the process if you don't do this step it is a must and well don't make the buns if you're not going to do this okay so it's been an hour and a half and you can see that the dough has really risen it's 
kind of tripled in size if in an hour and a half your dough hasn't risen it means number one that your kitchen is too cold number two maybe your yeast is dead and you kind of need to check that out and see what's happening there or you just need to let it rise a bit more sometimes it could take a little longer depending on the flour structure depending on the, the temperature of the milk depending on the altitude multiple factors so just be patient but you want to see it risen and you will see that it's like become really airy and it's like really soft if you tap it so i want to knock down and i want to start shaping it now so the easiest way to handle the dough because it's going to be a bit sticky is to oil your hands oil the dough and i'm going to be using a scraper you can use a, even a spatula if you have one but a scraper just makes it a lot more easier to maneuver and you can see it just kind of just brings everything together real easily so the whole point we are using oil is because we don't want to use flour. We want to just avoid making the buns too dry by adding excess flour into it. So I'm just kneading it ever so lightly to just knock out any of the excess air that's in it before I start shaping it. Feel that it's getting sticky at any point, add a bit more oil and just keep using that as your moisturizer you want to call it but it's basically going to help it not stick and that's it so you can see that it's gotten really smooth now and i'm quite happy with that before i can start shaping you could use a weighing scale to do this but i'm just gonna eyeball it i cut the dough in half i'm gonna cut each half in half and then i'm gonna cut each half in half as well so I have portioned out my dough and I've got 10 balls. Depending on how big you want them, this is basically the size I'm gonna go with. And you can see that I'm just rolling it around in my hand and using the pressure of my palm to make it smooth. If your dough is too sticky and if that's not happening and you're not achieving this, what you can do is take the dough and just slap it against the surface. Obviously ensure your surface is clean and then you will be able to work it better and then roll it around. So we're doing a two ball action now, or two hand action, I don't know what you want to call it. So I've got my buns shaped and now I'm going to be proofing them for at least 15 minutes before we can bake them. So just cover it up and leave it aside. While my buns are proofing, I'm going to make the crosses, which is basically flour and water that is mixed together to form this gloopy substance of sorts. So start with a little bit of water and keep whisking until you get the right consistency. So my buns have risen and I've beaten an egg really lightly and I want to do a quick egg wash at this stage because this is what's going to give it that really nice golden color. You could also use double cream to do the egg wash. Whee! Now that I've got the crosses on, you want to bake this until it's golden brown. Do not over bake. As it cools down, it does tend to cook a bit more. So my buns are out of the oven and while they are still hot, I'm going to brush them with a little bit of honey. If you don't want to use honey, you could use jam, whatever jam you like, but this gives it a really nice sweetness and stickiness on the top as it cools down. It also makes the top really soft and like squishy. So it's time to taste. They are still really hot, but because they're still warm, it's still a bit crispy. It's got a crust on the top. As it cools down, it will soften up. I'm just gonna have a bite. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hot, but we're just gonna, oh. I want you to look at this. I mean, I should really take smaller bites. There is a good amount of salt in here for a reason because you need that flavor that's gonna add to all the raisins and the spices. You can even do a little sprinkle of salt on the top if you like. Cut it in half, add some butter. It's so soft. I mean, come on, come on. You can dip this in coffee. I like to put a little butter, put a little sugar, 
and dip it in coffee and it's the best breakfast ever but i mean it doesn't get better than this these are my hot cross buns and well not my hot cross buns. these are these are hot cross buns yo and they taste really good so i'm just gonna so this is how I make my hot cross buns. You really need to try and give this a go because if you've never made it before at home, honestly, do it. You be the judge of it. Do not listen to me. Make it and see for yourself. They are extremely fluffy and trust me when I say when you eat homemade, you're never gonna wanna eat outside again. But few things to keep in mind and this is a primary important factor when you're making bread you need to let the yeast rise you need to let the gluten develop you need to let these things happen and that takes time so you cannot rush it waiting for 10 minutes while the yeast is uh, blooming is important waiting for an hour and a half when the dough is rising it's important these are points you don't want to skip on and it's not like you're going to be doing anything in that one and a half hour you go do whatever you want but that's basically the recipe it's very simple to make you guys please give it a go and if you do let me know in the comments i have a ton of other easter recipes coming at you in the next week so make sure to stay tuned every tuesday every friday at 2 p.m gst that's all for now make sure to subscribe to my channel and that's about it. Positive Ninja Vibes.